used in machine learning. It is called linear regression. It is perhaps the, the simplest thing that you will ever learn in any machine learning course. And I bet that in this room, many of you have already learned linear regression more than once. Okay. So um, what I would want to do today is uh, not to make you feel boring, again, uh, by just showing you some equations that I bet you have seen before, but I will want to bring up some perspective from the linear algebra point of view of what this linear regression is actually doing and how this linear regression is going to be positioned in a learning algorithm, that framework. Okay, so this is a rough outline of the five lectures that we are going to go through in the first part of the course. Uh, in these five lectures, we will study linear regression, okay, uh, a very simple method that can go through all these five, four blocks in the diagram that I'm showing here. What are the five blocks? Well, uh, you have a data coming in, and so you want to extract the features. Then you want to put a prediction model, and then you want to measure the loss. And then you want to uh, apply it to an optimization algorithm, and then find a solution, then feedback, and then update your model parameters. Okay, so this is the, uh, a very closed loop of a machine learning algorithm. Uh, so what is lecture one? The lecture one on linear regression will focus on the prediction model. It is an extremely simple model using just a line. And we want to show that this line is very powerful, that it can solve a lot of great engineering problems. So if you understand how linear regression works, I promise that you will solve a big number of problems that you're encountering in your own projects. Uh, the outline of today's lecture will be as follows. It is lecture one on linear regression, some basic analytic tools. Uh, we have two parts of this lecture. We want to talk about the basic notations of linear regression. And then we want to define the thing, what do I mean by loss function in a, in a regression setting? And then I want to comment on how do we solve the regression problem. So that's part one, some basics about linear regression. Then I want to jump into a little bit more abstract setting called the geometry of linear regression. This geometry will play a very, very powerful uh, role in the later part of the course when you try to understand what is the meaning of a feature? What do I mean by error? What do I mean by norm? Uh, those notions will play um, a big role in a typical machine learning problem. So I want to spend some time talking about the geometry. The geometry will be abstract, and uh, I hope you can uh, really spend the time to understand the geometry behind uh, 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 in the linear regression case. Make sure you, you get the point, uh, and then so that when you solve the problem, you know what you are doing. Okay, so just some very simple uh, introduction of the notations. I am going to use the following set of uh, symbols. If I'm going to describe a scalar, they will be small letters A, B, C, and then uh, they're all in the real space, R. Uh, if they're vectors, I will put the bold uh, letters. And if they're matrix Cs, they will become capital letters A, B, and C. Now, uh, I want to uh, uh, differentiate the notations between the columns and rows of that matrix A. The columns then denoted by A1 through AD, where D is the dimensionality of, uh, 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 of that matrix, and that is counting how many number of columns are there, or I can call it how many feature vectors are there in my data set. Uh, the rows of the A matrix, they are the, they are the data samples. So think about it in the following way. I go out and I do a survey, and I get the, um, the, the scores uh, of uh, the incoming students. So that could be the GPA, that could be your GRE scores, that could be your uh, scores that your, uh, uh, that your professors give you in the recommendation letters. Right? So these are different features. So I approach student one, the student one will have all these features stacked together. So the first entry will be your GPA, second entry will be GRE score, and so on. These will be one row, okay? 
So you are a student, you are data sample point, and so you have one row of all these features stacked in one row. This is x1 through xn, okay? So that's one row. And then the columns would be all the students and then their GRE scores. So that column represents the GRE score column. Uh, these two are two different perspectives of that A matrix. Do you want to look at the uh, uh, prediction as a function of the features, or do you want to look at the prediction as a function of the person? Okay, so one is the column space perspective, the other one is the row space perspective. They're two different perspectives, and they're playing different roles in this machine learning algorithm, and they have different applications. Okay, uh, they also have different geometries that we want to spend time and understand. Uh, okay, and so uh, if I have identity matrix, it will be I, all one vector will be one, all zero vector will be zero, and then a standard basis, it will be EI. It means that you have a column vector, only the i element is one, otherwise it will be zero. Okay, so that's the, the basic notation. What is linear regression? The linear regression is a very simple problem. I give you a set of data points, and then I ask you to find a line that would be best fit to all these data points. It's as simple as this problem, okay? Now you can see that, okay, this problem is easy. I put all the data points into my Excel spreadsheet, I click a button, I get a result. But let me ask you, what, what is, what is, what does uh, uh, Excel do, uh, do uh, behind that button? Well, it's actually doing some kind of curve fitting. And behind this curve fitting, you're actually solving linear system equations. And by solving this linear system equation, there's a loss function associated with that. And there is a method that solves the problem for you. So there are a couple of steps when you're trying to solve this uh, line feeding uh, question. So I want to put the uh, linear regression into a slightly more abstract way so that we can generalize this concept to other problems. Okay, so this is a very simple problem. It's a toy problem on linear regression, but I want to use the same notation that can be translated to other problems later on in the semester. So what do I have? Well, you have uh, a set of measurements, YM. These are scalar numbers because you have, think about you have a, uh, the, all the GRE scores or the, or the GPA numbers and then, and then you have a number. That would be the predictor value, how, uh, 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 the, the overall score of the student, whether we should admit or not, right? So that would give you one score. That would be YN. N stands for the nth uh, sample. The input would be one row, okay? That, uh, the, the data point of that, uh, that student. And then what would be the model? The model is denoted by G, uh, subscript theta. Uh, uh, theta. Uh, this is a model that you pick. In this case, it would be a linear model. I put a theta there because I want to parameterize my model using a parameter theta. So theta could mean what? In the previous plot, you, it would mean the slope and also the y-intercept. Okay, so these are the trainable parameters, by finding out the theta, you can, you can define the line. Uh, the goal here is very simple. You want to find the best theta so that all the yn's will fit well with the prediction, which is g applied to xn. Is that clear? All right. Now, linear regression is a special type of regressions, and in this linear regression setting, you are going to restrict g to a linear function, and by linear function, I really mean that you have the theta vector, you, you do, you do an inner product with the x. Okay, so that would define a line. And what are the x? Well, x will have the dimensionality of d because you have d features. That's why you have d elements. The parameters, you also have d because now you're taking the inner product between theta and x, and so the, the dimensionality has to match. This is equivalent to the equation that I'm showing at the bottom, which is the sum of the theta i's and x, x, uh, x i's. Now, once we have defined the, the notation, let's also try to define the loss function, because in any machine learning algorithm, you want, to, you want to settle the loss function, and then you want to minimize the loss function. So what is the loss function here? Uh, in, in the regression case, we are going to define a loss called the L, the L will take two inputs. One is your predicted value, which is the G, applied to your input data X. And then you have the, the, the value Y. Y is your, your actual measurement. You put the loss function, and the loss function will calculate the difference between the two. 
and you sum over all the possible samples in your training set, and sum them all, you call that as the loss. And in particular, if I choose the square loss, which means that I will put the square difference between the, your prediction and also your measurement, that will give you the square loss function, you sum everyone up, That that is the uh, loss function that we use in linear regression setting. Now you ask, can I use another uh, form of um, uh, loss? Yes, you can, but why do we choose square? It's because square is differentiable. You like things to be differentiable so that you can take derivative, set it to zero, and then get an analytic form. Uh, you can use uh, uh, the one norm, which just put the uh, absolute value as your loss function, as I'm showing you in the second point here. Um, you can do that, um, and, and but then you need to pay the price of solving a, a little bit more difficult optimization problem. Okay, uh, in this problem, you may not even have a closed form if the uh, loss function is more complicated. The goal of the regression is to find a theta such that your loss function is minimized. Okay. Um, and so once you have this minimized uh, uh, loss function, you will get a minimizer, and this is called the theta hat. And once you put this theta hat into your model, you can put in a new testing data point, I call it x nu, you put it into your model, and then this model will return you the predicted value. Okay? If it matches well, you're happy. If it doesn't match, you go back and you debug. Okay? So that's, that's the general framework of uh, what is the model that you're choosing here? It will be a linear model. What is loss function? Square loss function. What is problem? It's a minimization problem. Okay, so that covers the generic pipeline of machine learning. Any machine learning problem is framed in this way. Okay, if you have your algorithm that will solve a, a loss function uh, in a similar manner. Okay, so now let's just jump a little bit into the equations. So let's uh, restrict ourselves to a line. Then what do we have? Well, then then you have this equation at the first point. You have g equals to x transpose theta. Then what would be the loss function? Well, I, since I choose a square loss function, I can write them as the summation of the square terms uh, between all the differences. And then I can I can also rewrite that summation as a, a two-norm square. Uh, that's just coming from the linear algebra. The, the two stroke here means the, the norm, the vector norm of the vector, and that literally means uh, that you take the difference between the two uh, elements and then take the square and then sum them up. That that would be the the, 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 the norm, okay? Uh, the A matrix here is just the A matrix that we saw. It would be all the co all, all the rows, and then the theta will be a, a vector of the, uh, the, the, the feature uh, values. Uh, we call these uh, thetas as the regression coefficients, okay? And we want to analyze these regression coefficients. Okay, so what is the minimization problem here? Uh, in, in the, if you solve this minimization problem, that means you want to take the derivative of this loss function, set it to zero, and then uh, do some linear algebra, and then get the inverse, then you can get a solution. So in this theorem, it shows you that if you're looking at this minimization problem, then there is a minimizer, and this minimizer is given by this A transpose A inverse A transpose Y. Now, I'm making an assumption here that your A transpose A is invertible. Okay, I will comment on this when we go to the geometry. When A is not invertible, then what do you do? So assuming that A is invertible, then this is the solution. And how do we get that? Well, I'm showing you the, uh, the derivation at the bottom, okay? Literally just taking the gradient of that loss function. If you are uh, not familiar with the gradient, uh, you're welcome to take a look at the, um, uh, the linear algebra uh, tutorial. Uh, at the, uh, the last section of that tutorial, you will find a few examples on taking gradients uh, of uh, uh, vectors. So that would be very useful. And um, in this course, uh, we will normally deal with um, uh, loss functions with square terms. So make sure that you understand how to take the gradient of a square function. Okay, so uh, this is the solution. The solution is, is given by this form, assuming that A transpose is in invertible. So let me give you some quick examples, okay? I can use the, uh, the previous model to solve the, the, the line feeding problem, okay? So I just have a bunch of data points to find a straight line to go through it. That's very simple, okay? Uh, or you can try to feed in a, a second order polynomial. In the second order polynomial, you have a quadratic equation, so you have ax n squared 
B, X, N, and then C, you can put all these X, N square, and then X, N, and also the last one with a 1, okay, into that matrix. Uh, you set up your Y, Ns, you set up your, your, your thetas, and then you solve this equation. Previous slide, you can look at this equation, it will be the same equation. Click in a button, and then you get a solution. Uh, you can use the same uh, approach to solve an autoregression problem where yn is equal to uh, yn minus 1, meaning that if you are at time t, at time n, you look at your previous sample and uh, uh, two samples uh, before you, okay? That would be very useful when you look at star market, okay? Or you're trying to look at speech signals where you are trying to look uh, uh, samples that, that came before you, okay? Uh, this is called the autoregression model, and then there are A's and B's in this uh, equation. You want to find out the A's and B's. And so what would be the A matrix? Well, the A matrix would be just the columns of all the Y's with a shift uh, index so that uh, it will match with the Y vector that you have in your measurement. All right? Okay, so then you can solve for A and B's in this equation using the linear regression approach. Uh, you can generalize this uh, linear regression approach to even more complicated problems. Um, this is a typical problem if you take a signal processing course, which is called the Fourier transform, or the Fourier series expansion. Uh, it says that if I have a set of sinusoidal functions, uh, they are different by the, uh, the frequency. So you have a, you have a, uh, 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 nominal frequency omega naught, and then you just take the uh, integer multiples of all these frequencies, you have a set of sinusoids. And we ask, if I give you a function that sh I'm showing you at the bottom, which is the blue one, uh, find, uh, and then I give you all the data points, the blue crosses, okay? Find me the blue curve that comes from a linear combination of all these red curves. Right, so so the the, black, the the blue curve has to be a linear combination of the red curves. I tell you that I believe that this, all these data points uh, would would be a would be the uh, certain number times the the, the first red function and then plus a certain number times the second function and so on. Okay, so this is called the a Fourier series expansion on uh, a function, uh, and you can also solve this problem using the linear regression. Okay, and then now you can extrapolate this idea to other things. You can have a polynomial you can, you can extrapolate. You can have your own, uh, defined basis functions you want to interpolate using the linear regression model. You can find out the regression coefficients. Okay, so all these can be applied using just this very simple principle.